Somebody slip your hands up and say, thank you, Jesus. God, I love you. God, you are worthy of all the honor and all of the praise. And today we just say thank you. Today we just say thank you. Today we say thank you. Not for what you're about to do, not for what you've done, but because we know that you can do. God, you've given us a promise and, and we believe what you said. God, we trust you, we trust you. We believe you, Jesus. Every word you say. Father, as we start this service, we ask that you come in the midst. Somebody needs to be delivered tonight. Somebody needs to be set free. Somebody needs to be set free. Somebody needs to be set free on today. And God, only you can do it. But we have to believe everything that you've promised us. We set the atmosphere for freedom on today. God, come in the midst. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. My Redeemer has saved me from sin. My soul is awakened, I live, free from what held me, I'm free from what's fought me, mentally, you've captured me, and in my mind, I am free. In my heart, if I'm yours, I am free. Come on, help me sing. Say, my redeemer. Anybody believe that this morning? My soul. It's awakened. And that's why I live. Listen, say freed from what held me. Said we're free. Yeah. Mentally say you captured me. And in my mind, I am free. In my heart, if I am yours, I am free. One more time. Say, my Redeemer. My Redeemer has saved me from sin. Anybody saved from sin? See, my soul is awakened. I live. Yeah. We're free from what held us. Oh, I'm free. Mentally saved. You captured me. In my mind, I am free. In my heart, if I am yours, I am free. Hey, mentally say, you captured me. In my mind, I am free. In my heart, if I am yours, I am free. Oh, hey, say mentally say. You captured me in my mind. I am free in my heart. If I am yours, I am free. Yeah. Listen, hey, where the spirit of the Lord our God is at rest, there is freedom. You can be freed from bondage and healed from brokenness and full of joy be free where the spirit of where the spirit of the lord, lord is there is liberty is free. and there's freedom you can be free anybody believe that you can be free say brokenness oh. where the spirit
want to be free today? Just lift your voice and say this with us. Say, be free. Say, brokenness. We want to be free from depression. Be free. We want to be free from all those things that have us bound. You can be free today. Say, brokenness. One more time, say, be free. We're free from all those things that have us bound in our minds. Yeah, yeah. Say brokenness. Yeah. Be free. Be free. Be free. See brokenness. free from financial struggle we are free from those past things it's in the past say brokenness Brokenness. we're free from those demonic things that try to hold us down we're free from everything that gave us tears say brokenness Be free. Be free. Be free. Say. Be free. Said be free. Be free. Yeah. Said be free. Say. Be free. Anybody want to be free? Anybody want to be free? All you have to do is accept it. All you have to do is listen and hear what God says to you. Say brokenness. Listen, if you want to be free, just lift your hands right there. Say, God, I trust you. God, I believe you. God, we we don't just want to be free. We need to be free. God, I need to be free. We're not okay with where we are. We want to be free. This weight is too heavy for us. All these shackles, I can't walk with these shackles on. So break the chains, break the chains. Break every chain in our lives, in our families, in our jobs. Break every chain. Be free. Be free. Free to worship. You are our Lord, our God, our King. No more chains holding me. The shackles have broken. The shackles have broken. Because you have spoken. I said, I'm free to worship. To sing, you are my Lord, my God, my King. There's no more chains holding me, the shackles have broken because you have spoken. Somebody touch yourself and say, Now I am free. I'm free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, if you know that your Redeemer lives, why don't you give God the praise and the glory that is due His name? If you know that your Redeemer is the one who sets you free, is the one who liberates you from every shackle, every form of bondage, you can be free today because your Redeemer lives. Is there anybody here in the sanctuary this morning, in the house of worship this morning, in person or virtual, that knows that you are free in Jesus?
Jesus' name, because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Oh, come on and worship him in your liberty. Worship him in your freedom. Worship him. Worship him because he is deserving of every hallelujah. He is deserving of every adoration. He is deserving of every thank you, Jesus, because he's the one that has set He's the one who has set us free. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I hear the old saints saying, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. Come on, no more chains. No more chains holding me. My soul. My soul. Resting, it's yeah. such a blessing, it's such a blessing. It's such a blessing. Come on, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm Come free. on, one more time. I'm free. I am free. I am free. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm He has removed shackles, hallelujah, from our hands and from our feet and from our spirit because he has renewed our joy, because he has given us peace that surpasses all understanding, because he has given us joy unspeakable, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am free. This is the day that the Lord has made, we rejoice, and we are glad in it. This is the freedom that we have because the Lord has freed us, and we're the redeemed of the Lord, and we will not be silent, hallelujah, because the word says to let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So we thank God for the privilege that we have to be in the house of worship on this morning. We thank God for the freedom that we have to worship him in spirit and in truth. If you're glad to be in the house of God, why don't you just say, I'm glad to be here. You can type it in the comment section. If you're in person, you can say, I'm glad to be here. Hallelujah. I am glad to be here. And we're glad that you are here. We're thankful for all that God is doing in our church. And God does great things in our church through people who have a spirit to serve and do the work of ministry. In Baptist Grove, we are living to serve. We believe God has saved us to serve, to put our hand to the plow, to accomplish the mission that he has called us to. And we're thankful for all of our volunteers. We're thankful for all of those who are leading through service. And we're grateful, especially for our young people who are serving. And right now, we want you to take a look at this dynamic testimony from one of our servant leaders here. Good morning, Baptist Grove Church family. We're excited to have you in worship this morning. It's so great to have you here at BGC, and I'm excited to have my son, Donovan, to share what's happening at BGC with us. Son, what should someone do if this is their first time joining us? Simple. If this is your first time, just type first time in the chat, and we can give you a BGC shout out. That's right. We're so glad you're joining us today for the first time. 
There are several ways you can stay connected with us all week long. Donovan, what are they? Visit the website, download the app, subscribe to the newsletter, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. There are so many ways to find out how you can do life with us here at BGC. Dad, tell us ways to grow in our faith here at BGC. There are so many ways to grow, but during this series, Returning to Wholeness, the pathway towards recovery. In life, we all experience pain and suffering. As a result, we are all healing from wounds, and when we hurt, we turn to unhealthy coping cycles. God wants to place us in a recovery path towards wholeness. God wants to place us on the path to living fully in Christ. To support all of us on our journey to wholeness, we put together a reading list that's designed to help you heal and move towards spiritual, emotional, physical, and mental wellness. This reading list can be accessed on the BGC app and the website under Reading List. It's graduation Sunday. That's right. Today at 4 o'clock, you can join us on our graduation service where you are and celebrate our graduates. Donovan, where can they watch? Right where you are watching service right now. Just come back at 4 p.m. We love our graduates and we are so proud of every single one of them. We want to share a short story about one of our graduates heading to college this fall and the journey he has had with us during the last four years. My name is Jaden Bridges and I've been here for about four years. I do Kerygma and I, and within Kerygma, I just work the side camera. Sometimes I'll veer over to other parts, but mainly side camera. Honestly, when I first came, I wasn't sure about joining a ministry and then my mom forced me into it. But I mean, it was Kerygma, um, working with other people and cameras, it was just kind of fun. So I stuck with it. I've done band all four years of high school. And then recently in my senior year, I've just started doing a lot of a lot more clubs while still volunteering at church and doing everything else possible. Um, so I joined three honor societies and I started two clubs of my own and then I kept doing band. So I'll be graduating on June 11th and I'll be attending Carnegie Mellon University in the fall. So I'm very excited about that. Um, leaving my mom, it's a hard thing to do, but I think, I think I'm ready to just tackle on a new challenge. I'm gonna study mechanical engineering. Something that started back in my childhood. My mom knew I was interested in engineering. So one Christmas, she got me this set. It was basically what it was. It was a, it was a truck that you had to build from these small tiny pieces in a bag. After I finished building it, I wasn't having as much fun with it. So that same week, I saw my mom, she was preparing some gifts so she could take it to this toy drive for kids who probably can't afford to have toys for that year. I went upstairs and I just asked, can I donate the truck? And she was like, yeah, go ahead. So I wrapped it up and we went over and I put it in the bin and then I left and I don't know, the feeling that it left was kind of like, wow, I just built this, I just built this remote control truck fully functional and was able to give it to somebody else who probably would never see anything like that. That, that feeling afterwards kind of made me get into engineering and I chose my field of mechanical engineering based on that as well, because I just want to be able to help um, people who may not see the technology in their life. And that's my end goal. I want to be able to basically support other people through my field. I would want to pass on just the knowledge of how to be involved in other things, bigger things than yourself. Coming to church to serve, you're doing it for something bigger than yourself. Coming to Baptist Grove, I felt that connection and being able to serve, being able to meet new people, talk to new people, all of, all of that. I mean, that's what Baptist Grove has done for me and serving and all that, it's just what I can do to help. 
Will you give it up for Jaden, amen? Will you give it up for Jaden in the comment section? Come on and just give it up for him. We give God thanks and praise for all who are serving. We thank God for those who have the heart to serve, amen. We need even more people who are serving in ministry here. And we are also celebrating all of our graduates today, hallelujah. At 4 p.m. today, we will celebrate all of our BGC graduates. Will you give it up for our graduates today in the comment section? Come on and say congratulations to them. Even in this time as we are virtual, we want them to know how proud of them we are. We are extremely proud of their accomplishment and we are grateful for everything that God is going to do in their future. And so at 4 p.m. today, we have a special service for our graduates and we hope that you will log on and be a part in the virtual virtual sanctuary to celebrate our graduates on today. Amen. We're returning to wholeness. We are returning to wholeness and we are believing God for transformation, for healing, for restoration. We recognize that we serve a God who makes all things new. And we also understand that because of the sensitivity of this preaching subject and topic, uh, there may be times where you are triggered by what is said. Uh, our encouragers, our encouragers in the comment section, they are prepared right now, uh, they are giving a hotline number for you to call in the event that you feel like you need to speak to someone to address anything that you are feeling or anything that you're going through. You can call that number that our encouragers are putting up right now. Amen. It is nothing wrong with seeking support. Somebody say amen. It's nothing wrong with seeking help. As a matter of fact, there is a problem with not seeking help because the Bible says there is safety in the abundance of counsel. And so it's important that even in this time that we are seeking support. And if you need support, that number there that our encouragers have put up, you can call it. Amen. Now, what time is it? What time is it? And what do we do? Amen. We give the Lord praise that we have it to give. We give God praise because we understand it is a privilege to be able to give to kingdom work. We recognize, as we talked about in Bible study on this past Wednesday, that our giving is a sanctifying word. Hallelujah. God purifies and purges our values as we give and as we sacrifice. And this is why Jesus speaks of giving. Uh, second only, it's the most prevalent subject, second only to the kingdom of God. And so Jesus recognized that there is a relationship between the condition of our heart and the surrender of our lives and the sacrifice of our substance. And so it is important, amen, that we allow God to sanctify us. If we are struggling to give to God what belongs to him, if we are struggling to give generously and to give graciously, will you pray about that? Amen. Confess it to God, pray and say, Lord, I truly do want to surrender even more to you because I know that as I surrender to you, if God has you, God also has your substance. Amen. If God has you, God has your stuff because you recognize it comes from him anyway. And it is a privilege to be able to give unto him. I want to thank those who are supporting the work of ministry here at Baptist Grove Church. Uh, the, your sacrifice, your generosity enables us to do the work of ministry, not only in the church, but also beyond the church. Our community is being transformed through the ministry of this church, and we are grateful for it. There are multiple ways that you can give. You can give online. You can text to give. And if you're not comfortable giving online, if you're not comfortable texting to give, you can mail your check into our P.O. box. It is on the screen now. However you choose to give, we are grateful for it. We're thankful for it. And we celebrate and honor God now by worshiping him through our giving. We also remind you that the harvest is... The harvest is now. The harvest is now. And I'm thanking God right now, even now as we're in the virtual space, I'm thanking God for the new sanctuary. I'm thanking God not only for the new sanctuary, but for the souls that he is sending to this church and those who are going to be saved at this altar through the work of ministry. We are grateful for that and we're sacrificing for it in faith. We're sowing. Some people have to see it in order to believe it. Some people see it by faith and they give and they sacrifice for it. I want to thank God for all 
who are sacrificing. Amen. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise for your goodness. We thank you, God, because we recognize that everything that we have comes from you. What a faithful God you are. We thank you, oh God, because you not only provide our needs, but you've also blessed us with some of the desires of our hearts. Thank you for such extravagant generosity that you've demonstrated by sending your son, Jesus. Jesus, thank you for the extravagant generosity that you demonstrated by giving your very life. You laid it all down for us. And so, God, we count it a privilege now to be able to worship you through sacrificial and extravagant giving. We pray, God, in this time for even greater surrender. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that anything that hinders us from obeying you in the area of our stewardship, God, that you will free us. Hallelujah. That you will liberate us. God, help us to experience the freedom that comes through greater surrender. And we thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the sacrificial privilege that we have to be able to give. Be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all of God's children say amen. Let all of God's children say amen again. Our worship ministry is coming. They are leading us higher in worship. Come on and let's magnify him wherever you are right now. I don't want you to be a spectator. No, because when we're in worship, God calls us to be participators. And all of us have a reason to magnify the name of God. Let us praise him in spirit and in truth. Anybody, anybody want to change? God is the, he's the mender of broken hearts. He's the, he's the doctor in the sick room. He's the, the changer of minds. He's the, he's that person that can do exceedingly and abundantly above we believe. Listen, come on, let's sing it. I believe, I believe his word. His word. And I receive his word. Come on, he promised me. He promised a change. And I believe Come on, I proclaim his word. Standing on. Say no lack. Listen, say no. No lack is in my life. And full healing has full come to us. Full healing is in my life. Listen. And everything is restored. Everything's restored. We have a witness today that says that everything is restored in our lives. Not only that, but listen, all of our past is gone. Erased. All hurt and pain, it's gone. See, everything is changed. Everything is changed for me. Let's sing that again. Say, no lack is in my life. No lack is in my life. Yeah. And full healing's in my life. And everything's restored. Listen, he's bringing it back to us. Everything's restored. Everything the devil stole. Listen, say all of my past is gone. And all hurt and pain is gone. It's gone. We know that everything is changed. It's changed for me. We say everything is changed. 
everything has changed everything has changed for me we know that everything has changed and nothing is the same everything has changed for me come on help me say everything has changed everything has changed Said everything has changed Anybody just need a change? A wonderful change. Say everything. Oh, oh, oh. And nothing is the same. Oh, oh, for me, yeah. Say everything has changed. Everything has changed. Everything has changed. We got a word over our life. You promised me. And you said it's all done, it's changed Nothing is the same Oh, yeah, it's changed for me Sing it one more time, everything is changed We don't have to look back no more All my past is gone Say everything is changed Nothing is the same Everything is changed for me. So I believe His word, and I receive His word, and He promised me a change, and I believe it. Help me sing and say, I believe. I believe. All over the building. Say his word. His word. I, receive. I receive. His word. His word. God, you promised us. Promised you promised us a change. And we believe it. And I believe it. Listen, in order to change, you have to deliver us from all the cycles all the cycles the cycles the cycles help me sing deliver us from the cycles cycles of depression cycles of defeat cycles of anxiety cycles of family issues all the cycles Snatch us out of the cycles. I said, snatch us out of the cycles. We want to deliver us from the cycles. We don't want to be here no more. We don't want to be here no more. We want you to come and get us, God. Just take us from the cycles. Because it goes over and over and over and over. We want to be out here. Jesus. One more time, say psycho, psycho. Oh, psycho. Oh, the cycles. Oh, listen, we know that there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the mighty name of Jesus. Said there. Listen to do what? Break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every. Come on, y'all know. Don't be singing. There is power. There is power. Wherever you are. In the name of Jesus. See, there is power. There is power. In the name of Come on, sing it like you mean it. Say, there is power. There is power. To do what? Break every, break every chain, break every chain, to 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 break every chain, all those chains that have us bound, break it, all those relationships that we don't want to 
fear no more. Go on and break it, Jesus said. Break every, break every, break every chain. Say break every. Oh, oh, oh. All the cycles, 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 cycles. Help me say it. Cycles. Deliver us from. We don't want to be here no more. We want prosperity. We want to put a smile back on our face. Oh, 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 cycles. Cycles. Anybody need a deliverance? From those things that just go over and over and over. My God. Some things are generational. It's time to break those generational curses. I said it's time to break those generational curses. Curses of divorce. Curses of fornication. Lust. Sinful things. We want to break these things. Anybody want to break these cycles? Oh, cycles. Yeah, cycles. Help me sing one more time. Say cycles, cycles. cycles. We serve a God who is able to break every chain. No matter how long you have been bound by whatever chain may be holding you, God is able to break cycles. Hallelujah. Father, we are so thankful for the hope that we have in you. We give you glory and we give you honor because we know that you truly do have our power in your hands and your power is greater than whatever problems we may be facing right now. And so God, we have hope and we have expectation that your purpose will be accomplished in our lives. We give you thanks and we give you praise, God, because we recognize that the devil is already defeated. You have already crushed Satan under our feet. And so we come right now, God, with faith and expectation that you will break every chain and every destructive cycle in our lives. Have your way, God. Be glorified. Holy Spirit, we pray that now through this time of proclamation that your word will perform God's work. God, that your word will go forth and accomplish what you send it forth to do. Have your way now. For the one who is listening, and they're discouraged. I pray that you will encourage them. For the one who is listening and they're confused, I pray that you will give them clarity. For the one who comes, God, and they are unsaved, I pray that today they will leave knowing Jesus and the pardoning and forgiveness of their sins. For the one who comes right now, they don't have a church home. I pray, Father, that you will connect them with your family. Be glorified. And as the preacher, I pray that you will anoint me afresh from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet to declare your truth. Let me say what you want to be said. Let me say it the way you want it to be said. Nothing more, nothing less. We give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, let all of God's children say amen. Let all of God's children say amen. 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 
Amen. Amen. This morning, I want to continue in our series, Returning to Wholeness. And I want to direct our attention to the book of Judges, chapter 2, starting at the 11th verse and reading through the 19th verse. The book of Judges, chapter 2 starting at the 11th verse and reading through the 19th verse. You can follow along on the screen. You can follow along in your Bible. I'm reading from the English Standard Version, and it is recorded as follows. And the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and served the bows. And they abandoned the Lord, the God of their fathers, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. They went after other gods from among the gods of the peoples who were around them and bowed down to them. And they provoked the Lord to anger. They abandoned the Lord and served the Baals and the Ashtaroth. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel and he gave them over to plunderers who plundered them. And he sold them into the hand of their surrounding enemies so that they could no longer withstand their enemies. Whenever they marched out, the hand of the Lord was against them for harm, as the Lord had warned and as the Lord had sworn to them. And they were in terrible distress. Then the Lord raised up judges who saved them out of the hand of those who plundered them. Yet they did not listen to their judges, for they whored after other gods and bowed down to them. They soon turned aside from the way in which their fathers had walked, who had obeyed the commandments of the Lord, and they did not do so. Whenever the Lord raised up judges for them, the Lord was with the judge, and he saved them from the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For the Lord was moved to pity by their groaning because of those who afflicted and oppressed them. But whenever the judge died, they turned back and were more corrupt than their fathers, going after other gods, serving them and bowing down to them. They did, they did not drop any of their practices or their stubborn ways. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. From this passage of scripture this morning, I want to continue in our series, Returning to Wholeness. And I want to focus our attention on the sermonic subject, stuck in unhealthy cycles. Stuck in unhealthy cycles, stuck in unhealthy cycles. When we read, and even often when we preach the book of Judges, we are most often drawn to the heroic feats, the incomparable strength, the formidable power of the judges themselves, the leaders that God raises up to deliver God's people. We've heard their names. Some of them are extremely well known today, well known in the scriptures. Ehud, Jephthah, Gideon, Samson, Barak. Shagmar. We, we've heard some of their names, especially Samson, right? I mean, a man who can kill lions with his bare hands, a man who can tie up foxes by the tail. Certainly, he will be well known. So when we come to the judges, we often focus on the personality of the leaders that God raises up. We often focus what they accomplished, their strengths, and their weaknesses. After all, the book is called Judges. But I would submit to us that even as we come 
read the book of Judges and look at the leaders themselves. We should not only focus on the personality of the leaders, but we should also focus on the problem that necessitated their presence in the first place. You see, my brothers and sisters, when we look at Judges, there is a pernicious and persistent problem that required God to raise up deliverers, that required God to raise up leaders to deliver his people. This whole book should be read in light of the communal context. You see, this book should be read in light of the fact that everyone at this time was doing what was right in their own eyes. This book should be read in light of the fact that there was no king in Israel. And everyone uh, was not acknowledging God as their king. This book should be read in light of the fact that everyone is engaging in relative righteousness. What's right to me is right to me. What's right to you is right to you. You do what's right to you, and I do what is right to me. And so as a result, there's utter chaos in Judges. When we read this book, we see anarchy. We see anarchy as a result of sinful choices and sinful decisions of God's people. So in the face of these grave communal challenges and problems, God raises up judges, leaders to deliver. And our focal passage this morning, Judges chapter 2, verses 11 through 19, is a diagnosis of the dis-ease that we read about in Judges, our focal passage informs us of the persistent problem that is in the book. And if I can capture it very succinctly and yet still accurately, this is the problem. The people do what is evil in God's sight. They abandon God and serve other gods, lowercase g. God then hands them over to plunderers who plunder them. As a result of their disobedience, they are in terrible distress. And they do like we do. When they get in trouble, they cry out to the Lord for help. And the Lord hears their cry, raises up judges to deliver them and save them from their oppressors. But when the judge dies, they repeat step one and consequently go through steps two through four again. Here it is. They pursue after God. They're plundered. They cry out in pain. God rescues them from their pain and then they turn away from God again and they are plundered again, cry out to God in their pain. God rescues them from their pain and they repeat it all over again. Wash, rinse, repeat over and over again. This is the cycle. Pursue after other gods, be plundered, cry out in pain, be rescued from their pain, and then pursue after other gods, be plundered, cry out in pain, are rescued from their pain, pursue after other gods, cry out in their pain, are rescued from their trouble, and then pursue after other gods. Pursue after other gods. They are plundered. God rescues them, delivers them from their pain. They forget everything about God, and they go through the cycle over and over and over and over again. It sounds like a broken record. It's because the problem in Judges is the cyclical nature of poor decisions. It's repetitive foolishness. It's the perpetual 
problematic behavior that leads them into their demise. In Judges, the people are stuck in unhealthy cycles. And any close reader of this book can capture this because the writer of Judges crystallizes this cyclical problem through one word, again. Again. Let, let's take a look really quickly. Judges chapter 3, verse 12. And the people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel because they had done what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Judges chapter 4, very next chapter, first verse. And the people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. Go to Judges chapter 8, verse 33. As soon as Gideon died, the people of Israel turned again and whored after the bows and made bow bear their God. Judges chapter 10, verse 6. The people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and served the bows and the Hashtaroth, the gods of Syria, the gods of sight. And Judges chapter 13, verse 1. And the people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord gave them over to the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. Do you see it, my brothers and sisters? The author of Judges continues to repeat again, 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 they did it. Any passionate reader of scripture would read this book and say, not again. <laughs> not, not, not. Not again. The same disobedience again. The same mess again. Facing the same result again. The same thing. Really? Not again. Seriously? Not again. Are they really in the same predicament? Are they really in the same position? Have they not learned the lessons of the problems they have faced? Have they not learned the lessons of the affliction they have experienced? I mean, they have repetitive dysfunction. It's like a broken record. Backwards, backwards and forwards, only to go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. No true progress. You progress only to regress. You pro experience promotion only to have demotion. You progress and regress over and over and over and over again. That this is what's happening in Judges. And if I can be honest, there are times I read scripture and I would prefer that what I was reading was a window rather than a mirror. <laughs> this, this is not a book that I want to look at and see a reflection of myself. That this is not a book that I want to read and see a reflection of my community. This is not a book that I want to read and see a reflection of my church. This is not a book that I will read and want to see a reflection of my people. This is not a book that I will read and want to see a mirror of my family. This is a passage that when I read it, I would prefer it was a window. Where I could look and say that was them. Where I could look and say that was their family. Where you can look and say that was his life. But if the truth be told, my brothers and sisters, I know you may not like to admit this, but the truth is, as I just described the cyclical nature of the problem in Judges, the reality is this text, it's more like a mirror than a window. Because the fact is, many of our lives are characterized by being stuck in unhealthy cycles. I know it's hard to say amen right here, but here is the reality. Oftentimes, we are stuck in repeat offenses and repeat sins and repeat 
foolishness and repeat poor decisions and repeat issues. We are stuck in unhealthy cycles. I wish I had somebody who could be real this morning and say, I'm stuck in unhealthy financial cycles. I pay off one credit card only to max out another. I'm stuck in bad relationship cycles. I go from one bad relationship, get out of that one, and choose another devil in my next relationship. I wish I had some people who could say I'm stuck in unhealthy cycles. I leave one abusive situation and come into another abusive situation. I'm stuck in unhealthy cycles. I have toxic interaction on one job. I leave that job because I don't like the people. Go to the next job and have toxic interactions with everybody there as well. I get upset with the people there and leave that job and have the same thing on the other job I'm stuck in unhealthy cycles from one addiction sometimes to another addiction (laughs) from excessive drinking to excessive gambling from excessive eating to excessively binge watching television from excessive shopping to excessive exercising From sexual addiction to excessive partying. From excessive working to excessive commitments. I wish I had somebody who could be honest and say, Pastor, I know what it is to be stuck in unhealthy cycles. I've, I've cried and I've snotted and I've prayed to the Lord to get me out of this. I've, I've come to the Lord and said, Lord, if you would get me out of this, I promise you, Lord, I will never go back to this again. I promise you, Lord, that if you get me out of this, I'm going to find follow you for the rest of my life. I'm fire baptized, Holy Ghost filled. If you get me out of this, I will never be back in this place. But just as soon as God answers you and as soon as God delivers you, you find yourself right back in the same place that you promised God you'd never be back in again. But most of us This resonates, and I tell you, I saw a clip that I'm about to show you right now that resonated with the work of our shepherd. Check out this clip. You you see, my brothers and sisters, the shepherd takes us out of one ditch, takes us out of the ditch because he loves us, hears our cry and picks us up, hears our cry and restores us, hears our cry and delivers us. But some sheep can testify that as soon as I got out of the ditch, I went and ran and jumped right back into the ditch. I'm stuck in unhealthy cycles. How many times are you going to end up in the same ditch over and over and over again? Wash, rinse, repeat. Here it is. Truth is, sometimes it's not new issues. It's the same old issues over and over again. Sometimes it's not simply a new person. It's the same person just with a different name that you're selecting over and over and over again. And the question is, how, how, how can I overcome these unhealthy cycles? First thing I want you to recognize today is you are not doomed. You are not predestined for destruction. 
You see, when we are stuck in unhealthy cycles, we can begin to have a fatalistic mindset. We can begin to believe that we are doomed to destruction. But can I tell you today, my brothers and sisters, do not allow the adversary to convince you to rationalize and justify your dysfunction. Don't become a defense attorney for your dysfunction. Do not deflect responsibility for your dysfunction. What am I talking about? We've all heard people say concerning their dysfunction. Here it is. I I guess it's just meant to be this way. I I guess it's not just, it's just not meant to be. I've even heard some people say, I guess I'm just cursed. Or I I guess my life is just doomed. I've heard others say, I can't help it. This is just the way I am. I've heard others say, this is just how God has made me. You hear people talk and say, it's not my fault. You've heard others say, I give up. I'm just going to stop trying. You've heard others say, it's that man or it's big brother or it's the man or it's the system. You've heard others say, if my mother was better, if my father was better, if my community was better, and I want us to know that all of these are tricks of the adversary to make us accept our unhealthy cycles in our lives. All of these are tricks of the adversary to make you think that the unhealthy cycle in your life has to be permanent. All of these are unhealthy cycles intended to stop you from seeking change because the adversary wants to convince you that because you've been like this for so so long you're gonna always be like this and there's no hope for you all of these are tricks of the adversary to stop you from pursuing change to stop you from believing that God is able to change all of these seek to take us off the hook for what we do here it is we want to be taken off the hook for what we do so we put what we do on somebody else's hook. Are y'all with me in here this morning? Uh, Here it is. We go back to Genesis right in the very beginning. And we do exactly what Adam and Eve did. Here it is. Adam, you ate the fruit. Adam says, well, God, it's this woman that you gave me. I want to put my actions on Eve's hook. Eve, you ate the fruit. Eve looks down at the ground and says, well, God, if you didn't create this serpent to be so crafty, I wouldn't eat that fruit. Eve puts what she did on the serpent's fruit. My question to you is, whose hook are you trying to hang your hangups on? Whose hook are you trying to hang your issues on? Whose hook are you trying to hang your pernicious, persistent problems on? But what I like about this passage is this passage passage lets us know that our issues are just that, our issues. Here it is. What what am I talking about? The the passage that I read in our hearing, uh, Judges chapter 2. What what I like about it is that verse 11 says, Israel did what was evil. Who did it? Israel. Verse 12 says, They abandoned the Lord. Who abandoned the Lord? Israel. Verse 12 says, they went after other gods. Verse 12 says, they provoked the Lord to anger. Verse 13 says, they abandoned the Lord. Verse 13 says, they served bows. Who did it? (laughs) They 
did. Their problem in this passage is not passive. It is not the result of something else. Their problem is active. They are the culprits. They are responsible. They do not try to hang. The writer doesn't try to hang Israel's issues on anybody else's hook. He doesn't try to blame anybody else. He says they are responsible. It was their decision. It was their choices. And to acknowledge that we are broken does not mean that we are no longer accountable or responsible for our actions. I want to say that again. To acknowledge that we are broken does not mean that we are not accountable or responsible for our actions. Here's what the Lord wants me to say to you. You are not doomed. You are not cursed. This is Israel. This is God's people. These are a blessed people. This is the progeny of Abraham, the one that God spoke blessings over. They have been chosen for God's glory. God has spoken promises over their lives. God has chosen them to give him glory. Likewise, you are not doomed, but you have been chosen by God. Hallelujah. You are not cursed, but you are created by God for his glory. Just in case you don't believe it, run to Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. It says God has created all things and for his pleasure they are and were created. God created you for his pleasure. God created you for his glory. God created you for his purpose. You are not doomed, but you are destined to give glory and honor to God. You are not cursed, but you are blessed. You are not helpless, and you are not hopeless. No, because the Bible says that God is our ever-present help, even in the time of trouble. You are not created for pain. Hallelujah. I got to say that again. You are not created for pain. You are not created for pain. You are not created to continue to go through painful experience after painful experience after painful experience as a result of decisions that you are making. God has not purposed you for that. God has purposed you for his pleasure, which means that if you have become accustomed to accepting and embracing and experiencing pain, you need to align yourself again with God's purpose for your life and know Know that God has created you for good. God has made you good. When he looked down at you, he said, ah, it is good. She is good. He is good because you have been made for his good pleasure. Your life is not a mistake. Here it is. You weren't, you weren't meant to perish. You were meant to live. Oh, I wish I had some witnesses right now, right now in the comment section that you could just start testifying. I'm going to live because God has purposed me to live. I'm going to live because God has created me to live. I'm going to live in life and life more abundantly because that's what God created me for. I'm going to live eternally because that's what God has created me for, to live eternally in his presence. Which means. The decisions you make matter. The course you choose matters. The company you keep matters. The discipline you demonstrate matters. The faith you have matters. Your integrity before God matters. You do not have to continue to stay in unhealthy cycles. You have a choice. You are not doomed to wrong decisions. It's like the person who is perpetually late. I mean perpetually late. They're late all the time for everything. And you ask them, why are you always late? And they say, well, I'm trying. Or they say, I just can't help it. I, I just can't help it. I know I've got to do better. And you know 
It is perpetual dysfunction because you can change the time and push it back and they will still be late by the same. <laughs> Am I talking to anybody? They will still be late by the same amount of time and they will say I'm working on it no you're not I'm trying no you're really not you know why because you sat in that bed and when the alarm went off you hit the snooze button five times you hit that snooze button five times can I tell you and the clockmakers understand your dysfunction which is why they put a snooze button on in on alarm in the first place I mean why even set an alarm if you're not gonna get up when it goes off if you're just gonna hit it and go back to sleep why even have a snooze button in the first place? <laughs> and what happens is they set the alarm for a certain time. They hit that snooze button. And when they hit the snooze button five times, they eventually get up and move like they got up when they first intended to get up. And they're putting on their makeup, they're eating all their food and everything else. They get in the car and have to drive like a maniac. Some people losing their religion, cutting people off, saying words that they shouldn't be saying, and still arriving late. And then when they're called out on it, they say, I'm trying. No, you're not, because you are not making decisions that will support growth and development. All I'm trying to say to you is that sometimes our dysfunction is so ingrained that we can't even acknowledge or recognize the decisions that we're making that are leading to the unfavorable outcomes that we're getting. It, it's repetitive dysfunction, which means that unhealthy cycles, hear me, are indicators of deeper issues that must be addressed. If you don't get anything else out of this message, hear me. Unhealthy cycles are indicators of deeper issues that must be addressed. Can, can we go a little deeper? Here it is. As we read Judges, Although the present generation is responsible for their actions, I believe that their unhealthy cycles are generational. The spirit of compromise is generational. You can read Judges chapter 1, 26 through 33. Can, can we talk about it for a little bit? Here it is. Judges 1, 26 through 33 says that when they enter into the land, when they engage in conquest, it says God told them to drive out all of the Canaanites. But instead of driving out the Canaanites, some of the tribes decided that we're going to keep them around as slaves. We are going to force them into labor rather than driving them out the way that God told us to drive them out. The question is, why are they disobedient? Why do they compromise? Well, I believe it goes back to their history as a people. You remember they were slaves. They came out of Egypt by God's hand. And here it is. Sometimes when you have been oppressed, you look at oppressors and you say that this is what living is. I mean, this is what life looks like. And if I'm ever in a position of power, I want to have what my oppressors have. And so they come out of Egypt and come into Canaan and say, it's time for us 
wants to live. And so we're going to have some slaves because that's what our oppressors had in Egypt. Can I tell you, my brothers and sisters, sometimes this dysfunction is ingrained in communities. Sometimes we are abandoning things and doing things that the majority culture is doing. And God is saying, don't you remember that I'm the one that brought you out of Egypt? I'm the one that delivered you. I'm the one that rescued you. Have you lost your mind? Don't you understand that you would not have made it this far without me? Living the life is found in me, not in what your oppressors have done. Here it is. They enslave some of the Canaanites. So as a result, this generation compromises, which means that in their very psyche, in the very fabric of their community is a spirit of compromise. You, you, you see this generational impact all throughout the book. Right there, early in the book, the faith is not passed down. Joshua's generation dies out and another generation grows up and the Bible says they don't know the Lord. Right there with the judge Gideon. You remember Gideon has to tear down an altar that his father built as a part of his leadership. You, you remember Jephthah, don't you? Jephthah made a foolish vow. And as a result of his foolish vow, his very daughter is sacrificed. You remember Je Judges 19, don't you? When the men of Gibeah came to rape the concubine all night long, the Bible says that the homeowner says to these men, take my virgin daughters and have your way with them. Violate them. This is generational dysfunction. You remember Micah, don't you? He comes to his mother and says, Mother, I took 1,200 shekels of your sil silver. He says, I stole it from you. She says, bless you, child. He gives it back to her, and she takes that 1,200 and creates a carved, graven idol out of it. This is generational dysfunction. You recognize sometimes the issues that lead to unhealthy cycles are deeply rooted. Sometimes it's generational curses that have to be broken. So, so sometimes we are stuck in dangerous cycles because of things that we aren't even consciously aware of. Some therapists call it repressed areas of our lives. Here it is. That even though it's repressed, the experiences in these repressed areas are still very much alive. And they say it's like a grave filled with living beings. And what gets buried isn't always dead. And even though we buried it, it's still having an impact on our decision even though we buried it and repressed it it's still having an impact on our actions even though we buried it it's still having an impact on how we feel and how we think about ourselves sometimes my brothers and sisters the dysfunction in our lives is deeply rooted which means that instead of simply praying Lord, get me out of trouble. Deliver me from trouble. Sometimes you need to pray. Deliver me from whatever is causing me to choose trouble. Am I with anybody in here? Is there anybody in here that says, Lord, I don't want you to just deliver me from trouble. I want you to deliver me from what continues to cause me to choose trouble in the first place. I don't want to choose trouble anymore. I want to walk away from trouble. I don't want to be bonded to trouble anymore. I want to walk away from trouble. I don't 
want to keep pursuing after trouble. I want to walk away from trouble. Deliver me, Lord, from what causes me to continue to make poor financial decisions. Deliver me, Lord, from what causes me to continue to make poor decisions in my relationship. Deliver me, Lord, from what causes me to continue to make poor decisions in the affirmation and seeking attention from other people that I shouldn't be seeking attention from. Lord, whatever it is, I'm asking you to deliver me. I wish I had some people in the house and in the sanctuary of God that could be real and say, Lord, I'm tired of just asking you to get me out of trouble because if you don't deliver me from what causes me to continue to choose trouble, I'll get in the trouble only to get back in the trouble and I'm tired of going from trouble to trouble to trouble. I want you to deliver me from whatever is causing me to choose trouble in the first place. I wish I had a church in here. Is there anybody here that says I'm tired of dealing with the spider webs? It's time for me to kill the spider. Is there anybody here that says I'm tired of just fanning the smoke? It's time for me to put out the flame. Is there anybody here that says I'm tired of just dealing with the symptom? Lord, I want you to deliver me from the root cause that is causing this cycle in my life. Do I have any cancer survivors here this morning? Do I have any cancer survivors? Hallelujah for your survival. You can testify that cancer brought many symptoms, but your doctor didn't just treat symptoms because if you don't kill the cancerous cells, you have no chance of survival. And God is saying to some believer, it's time for the cancer to die. It's time for the cancerous cells in your soul and in your spirit to die. It's time for the cancerous cells in your family to die. It's time for the cancerous cells in your marriage to die. It's time for the cancerous cells in your mind to die. Is there anybody here that says, Lord, I'm believing you. God, I'm trusting you. God, I'm believing and praying that you won't just deliver me from the trouble, but deliver me, Lord, from everything that causes me to choose trouble in the first place. God, I believe that whom the sun sets free is free indeed. God, I believe that you have the power to break every chain in my life. God, I believe that you have the power to create in me a clean heart, renew in me a right spirit. Try me, oh Lord, and know my thoughts. Search me and know my heart and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And how many of you can testify that God will do it? How many of you can testify that God can do it? How many of you can testify that God is able to deliver you. I wish I had a church. Somebody can testify. I came to God. Tore up from the floor up. I came to God. Broken in my spirit. I came to God. Stuck in unhealthy cycles. I came to God. Didn't know my left from my right. But when I came and prayed to him for deliverance, he delivered me. He healed me. He set me free. And can I tell you why? Can I tell you why he does it? God said to me, the hope in unhealthy cycles is that God, his grace is more consistent. His grace is more persistent than the cycles in our lives. 
many of you are glad that the stubbornness of God's grace is greater than the stubbornness of your sins because despite how many times the writer says again again they disobeyed again they walked away again they didn't follow him despite how many agains were in their life what I like about it is every time they called on the Lord again he delivered them again he saved them again he rescued them is there anybody that can thank God for the again in your life is there anybody that can thank God that went Sin did abound. Grace did all the more abound. Is there anybody that can thank God that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases? His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Grace. Great, great, great is your faithfulness. So all I'm trying to say is that God said to me that my again is greater than your again. My again is greater than your again. The again of my mercy is greater than the again of your mess. The again of my salvation is greater than the again of your sin. And the last thing is that the again of resurrection, hallelujah. Hallelujah. One night, Friday, they nailed him in his hand. They pierced him in his side. They put the crown of thorns on his head. They nailed him in his feet. And he died. Aren't you glad he died? He died. He died, he died, the devil said it was over, the devil said he was done, but how many of you know that early, early Sunday morning, he got up again. He got up again, which is why you're going to live again, which is why you're delivered again, which is why you are saved, which is why no bondage, no chain, no cycle, no brokenness can hold you down do i have anybody that says again i rise again i'm here again i'm delivered again i will praise him again my joy is restored again is renewed again. Say yeah, yeah. Say yeah, yeah. Say yeah, yeah. A 
again, 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 again. Right now in the comment section, just type, Lord, I know you can do it again. Lord, I believe you can do it again. Lord, I'm trusting you to do it again. My life will not be stuck in unhealthy cycles. I recognize that my life is not doomed. I have not been created for pain. I've been created for God's pleasure. Oh, hallelujah. God is speaking that right now to somebody's spirit. You have not been purposed to stay in a perpetual cycle of problematic, sinful behavior. God does not rescue you, bring you out of the ditch so you can jump right back into it. God says yes even when the world tries to justify and make accommodations for dysfunction. God says I don't make accommodations but I do deliver. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to. God says I do deliver, I do save, I do heal, I do make new. But you've got to acknowledge that sometimes the dysfunction in your life is deeply rooted. Sometimes it's generational. Sometimes it's deeply rooted in past experiences that you have repressed. But God says, I am able to deliver you. Hallelujah. I am able to save you. I am able to make you whole. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right where you are, you need to create an altar right in your home. Right now, in your bedroom, you need to create an altar. And you just need to lay yourself before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm tired of just exterior uh, decorations and exterior makeovers. Lord, I want you to make me over from the inside out. God, I want you to start doing some root work in my life. Pull up the roots that need to be pulled up change me God in my soul and in my spirit God I don't want you just to bring me out of trouble God I want you to take whatever out of me needs to come out so that I don't choose trouble again God I need you to do it again come on Lord make me over Lord make me over Lord, Lord make me over make me, make me over, over. Just make an altar wherever you are. Just allow the Lord to begin to work. Allow the Lord to begin to do surgery on your mind, surgery on your heart, surgery on your soul. Come on, Lord, make me. Lord, make me. Lord, make me. Lord, make me over. Lord, make me over. He's working right. 
right now. He's working right now. He's working right now. He's moving right now. He's transforming right now. He's setting free right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, mm, thank you that you are our Savior. Jesus, thank you for the power in that great name. Jesus, thank you for the deliverance in that great name. Jesus, mm, thank you for how you set us free in your name. Jesus. Thank you that your name has power to heal, that your name has power to save, that your name has power to renew, that your name has power to restore, that your name has power to deliver. Thank you that your name has power to reinvigorate. Thank you that again is in your name, again is in your hand. And so right now, Lord, I thank you for doing it again. I thank you for restoring again. I thank you for encouraging again. I thank you for cleansing again. I thank you for healing again. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, God. Right now, anyone under the sound of my voice, Lord, that does not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray that you'll save their soul right now. Right now, Lord, anyone that does not have a church home, I pray that you'll connect them with your church right now, right now, right now, right now. I pray for their surrender. I pray for their yes. Thank you that you're returning us to wholeness. You're returning us to the purpose that you created us for. And I give you glory for that great work that you're doing in Jesus' name. And all of God's children say amen. Right now, my brother, my sister, the Lord is speaking to you. Speaking to your heart, speaking to your soul, speaking to your mind. God is saying, today is the day for your new beginning. Today is the day for the cycle to be broken. Right now, if you're here and you need to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, all you have to do is text BGC New Life. BGC New Life because God is able to give you new life to 75787. If you're here and you need a church home, all you have to do is text BGC JOIN to 75787. I love to be your church family. We love to be your church family. I'd love to be your pastor. If you're here right now, you need to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now is the time. Today is the day. This is the time of transformation and a new beginning. Hallelujah. We're going to give you time. Our praise team is going to sing, Lord, just make me over again. Make me over again. We're going to close, but there's still going to be room for you and time for you to surrender your life. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise for this new beginning and this transformation. We thank you for worship. We thank you for what we have experienced in the word and in worship and we thank you God for the again that you are performing right now in our lives we thank you God for how unhealthy cycles are being broken right now and we thank you in Jesus name for the work that you're doing now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, hence now and forevermore. Let all of God's children say amen. Lord, make me over. Lord, make me over. We want to give you opportunity. Hallelujah. Lord, make me over. Lift your voices and say, Lord. Make me over 
us and make me over. Lord, we want you to make us over again. Make us whole and fill us up, Jesus. Amen. Oh, one more time, lift your voices and say, Lord, make us over, Jesus. Lord, make me over. Sing it again, Lord. We want you to make us over. Hey, say, Lord, make us over. Lord, make us over. Say, make us over again, Jesus. That's all we want you to do. That's all we need from you. time all over the building help us sing it say me make me over again hallelujah 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 make us over lord Make us over to you, Lord. 